Travel Michigan. I'm Dave Lorenz, along with Michelle Grinnell. And uh, we're going to uh, head over to Hickory Corners. I just love the name of that that little town. It was born to have Gilmore Car Museum. <laughs> it was. It really was. It sounds a cool little place. Um, and we are talking with Jim Lukens, who is the owner of Rise Sales in Hudsonville. And he is here to talk with us today about the Lincoln Motor Car Car Heritage Museum, which is uh, kind of the newest addition to the Gilmore Car Museum. So welcome to the show, Jim. Well, thank you. I'm very glad to be here. So uh, tell me, I, I think, if I recall, the Lincoln Motor Car Heritage Museum is fairly new. It's just starting, it's just got its dedication set very soon. Well, that's correct. And what it is, first of all, the four Lincoln Affinity Car Clubs in the United States, that's the old, basically, the old Lincolns, the new Lincolns, the Continentals and Zephyrs, and even what they call the road race Lincolns, hmm. have banded their funds together and their leverage under the Lincoln Motor Car Foundation. And they've been soliciting pledges for several years, and with those pledges now, they have built this brand new Lincoln Heritage Motor Car Museum that, that encompasses all of the, of the different aspects of the Lincoln, whether you like old or new or, or even the road race Lincolns. And it, it's really magnificent on the grounds of the Gilmore Museum. They built a 15,000 square foot clear span building. Well, it uh, sounds like it's going to be a, a cool thing, uh, Jim, to uh, check out. Now, you know, I'd, I'd actually forgotten that the Zephyr is a Lincoln, but I guess that's the point of this uh, Lincoln Motor Car Heritage Museum, isn't it? To uh, yes. remind people about the heritage of yes, that great some brand. People, uh, some people think of, when you say the word Lincoln, you know, they go back all the way to 1917. That's nearly 97 years. That's nearly 100 years. And in that 100 years, there's been all different aspects from great um, the great dual cow phaetons before the, before the war to the great presidential limousines after the war to the road race Lincolns and then all the way to the marks and the SUVs of today. So there's, there's lots of aspect to that Lincoln. Did the Lincoln start out as a, a Ford uh, Motor co- Company uh, product or was, were they their own brand at first? They were their own brand at first. There's a pretty interesting story because a man named Henry Leland who is quite uh, quite a machinist, that was his main claim to fame, and started a company called Cadillac. And he named that after the founder, the French uh, uh, explorer mm-hmm. that founded the city of, of Detroit. And when Billy Durant was putting together, assembling General Motors by buying all these different uh, unassociated makes, one of the brands that he bought was Cadillac. But then when uh, Durant came involved, Leland couldn't, uh, uh, found him to be not hard to, to or, or I should say too hard to get along with. So he broke away and started a second company called Lincoln, which was in honor of his favorite president, Amer- uh, Abraham Lincoln. And then uh, they started actually in, in 1917 building um, engines and uh, for the uh, war effort, World War One. And then after when the war ended, they turned to motor cars. And then in 1922, Henry Ford actually bought the assets of the Lincoln Motor Company from Henry Leland. Hmm. And and the famous quote the issue at that time was that he had built the most cars in the world, and now he was going to build the best cars in the world, hmm. the Lincolns. That's cool. Of course, you can learn all these things uh, at the uh, new Lincoln Motor Car Heritage Museum on the campus of the Gilmore Car Museum. You know, Gilmore has been around for a long time now. Uh, The facility is just incredible. And you don't really have to be a real car enthusiast to really enjoy just being at the Gilmore Car Museum. No, definitely not. They've got 90 acres. And originally it was Donald Gilmore. That's where the Gilmore name comes from. That was his own family farm out in the country. That's why it's uh, so remotely located. It's kind of in the middle of everywhere, but it's not near anything. Hmm. But it's a beautiful campus, all manicured, and they have created and and recreated quite a number of both uh, barns. They've got an old train station. They've got a double-decker bus from Europe, Great Britain, and now they're building these different uh, new museum buildings that replicate some of the old showrooms that these cars were sold in 
when they were new. In fact, the Lincoln Museum replicates a very famous Lincoln dealership, uh, the Platt Lincoln dealership that was on East Jefferson in Detroit. Oh. Cool. Do you anticipate that some of the um, the affinity clubs, you know, the Lincoln clubs, will be having like big meetings there, you know, car shows and such? Absolutely. In fact, we're expecting nearly 500 historic Lincolns from the oldest. Uh, in fact, we even have two of the Leland brand motor cars coming, all the way up to to the to the Lincolns of today. So, and in the future, this will be the site of the annual Lincoln Homecoming. Yeah. So, what what type of cars are going to be on display? Um, you know, at the Lincoln Motor Car Heritage Museum. Well, the first, the first, of course, is the great dual cowl phaetons of the of the twenties and the early thirties before the depression. Those are the Model K, the Model K A, and the Model K B. And then in nineteen thirty nine, Henry Ford. Uh, I'm sorry, Edsel Ford, Henry's only child, was quite a. Uh, um, international traveler, and he liked the smaller, sportier cars that he saw when he was in Europe. So he came home and asked uh, one of the four designers to design him a car that was along the lines of the cars that he saw in Europe. And they did. They called that car the Continental, hmm. in reference to see the ones that were in the, on the continent overseas. And the turn, first one turned out so well that they decided to build a number two to explore the possibility of really going into production. And that was the that was in thirty nine and then in forty the Lincoln Continental went into production, which ironically this fall, when the twenty fifteens come out, that's gonna be the seventy fifth anniversary of the Continental. But getting back to our story, Continental number one does not exist, but Continental number two does, and that is coming from Pennsylvania, it's owned by the uh, the restorer, the man that restored it, and that's going to be one of the vehicles that are going to be on display. Now, it travels around and goes to other shows, but it'll be there for 30 days once we get past this weekend. And then up, we go up through the, the famous uh, Continental Mark II of 1956, uh, the Continental Mark III of 69, Mark IV of 72, and then also the... Uh, the uh, full-size length of what we what they lovingly call the boats. So we're going to have something for everybody from the oldest to the newest. And I might uh, mention very interestingly, outside there's a bench with a bronze uh, casting of Lincoln, and you're able to sit on the bench and have it appear as if his arm is wrapped around you so you have a great photo opportunity sitting with Abraham Lincoln. Well, that's cool. Well, it's going to be uh, a fun time, uh, any time of the year, to go to the Lincoln Motor Car Heritage Museum. Now on the campus of the Gilmore Car Museum over there in Hickory Corners. And if you'd like to find out more information, just go to the website, gilmorecarmuseum.org. I want to thank uh, Jim Lukens, owner of Rise Sales in Hudsonville, for letting us know what's happening there at the new Lincoln Motor Car Heritage Museum. Well, you know, I really like um, cars. I'm not a big, you know, expert in cars at all. I, I don't even work on cars at all. But, but I sure do like to to see them. Uh, the 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 you know workmanship, the the art artistry that has gone into uh, making cars, especially here in Michigan. And one of the things that uh, I will often do is when I'm traveling around the state, I'll just kind of check out to see if there's a car museum in the area. Whether I'm, I'm in Flint, maybe at the Sloan Museum, or in Dearborn at the Henry Ford, maybe uh, one of the many other places all throughout the state that you can see these cool cars or these big events. Uh, you know, we have all these 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 cool events, including you know what we call Auto Palooza in the Southeast Michigan area it goes through basically all of August. So. There are all these great events, all these great attractions all throughout the state, and uh, a great way to find them is by going to Michigan.org. You can just do a search. You can do a search on cars or automotive, or maybe uh, if you're going to be in an area, do an event search on Michigan.org. You'll find all that information. Uh, very handy, so we recommend you do that today to do all your travel planning in any way that uh, you're looking to travel around the state of Michigan. We're going to find out about some people traveling by bike next, right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at michigan.org.